Hello everyone welcome back. Today we're tackling a really interesting problem called best time to buy and sell stock 5. If you've done the previous stock problems, you know the drill, buy low, sell high. But this one adds a spicy twist, called short selling. It sounds complicated, but we'll break it down step by step, and see exactly how to maximize our profit. Here's the setup. We have an array of stock prices where each element is the price on a specific day. And we have a number, let's call it K. This K is the maximum number of transactions we're allowed to make. Now here's the twist. Usually a transaction means buying first, then selling later. That's a normal transaction. But here we can also do a short selling transaction. This means we sell on a certain day first, and then buy back on a later day. In both cases, we want the difference to be positive. There's one important rule. We can't start a new transaction on the same day we finish an old one. Our goal? Make the most money possible, using at most K transactions. Before we look at an example, let's clarify short selling. In a normal trade you buy low and hope the price goes up so you can sell high. Short selling is basically the opposite. You bet against the stock. You sell it at a high price today, essentially borrowing it, and promise to buy it back later. If the price drops, you buy it back cheaper, and you pocket the difference. So, if we sell at $20 and buy back at $12, we made $8 profit. The key constraint to remember is that we need a cooldown of sorts. If you sell on Tuesday to close a deal, you can't start a new buy or short sell on that same Tuesday. Let's look at this example to make it concrete. We have prices 1, 7, 9, 8, and 2, and we can make two transactions. How do we get the maximum profit of 14? First, we can do a normal transaction. We buy on day 0 for $1. The price shoots up, and we sell on day 2 for $9. That gives us $8 of profit. Now for the second transaction. We see the price is high at $8 on day 3, but it crashes to $2 on day 4, perfect for short selling. We sell at 8, and buy back at 2. That's a $6 profit. Add 8 and 6 together, and we get 14. Just a quick heads up. We'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. The logic is exactly the same for everyone. I'll be showing the full code for other popular languages like Java, C++, and JavaScript, towards the end of the video so stick around for that. The first approach is to use recursion with memoization, basically exploring all possibilities but being smart about it so we don't repeat work. We need to track three things. What day we are on, how many transactions we have left to do, and our current status. We'll call this status the holding state. State 0 means we have empty hands, we aren't holding any stock. State 1 means we bought a stock and are holding it, waiting to sell. State 2 is the new one. It means we short sold a stock and are holding a negative position waiting to buy it back. On any given day, we can either do nothing, or take an action that moves us between these states. Okay we've talked about the big picture and the logic, now let's see what this looks like as actual code. I'll put the full solution up on the screen first, and don't worry, after that, we'll walk through the most important sections together. Alright, here's the Python code for the first approach, using memoization search. Don't worry if it looks like a lot, we'll walk through the key parts. Essentially, we define a recursive function DFS that works backwards from the last day. It checks every possibility. Do we buy, sell, or hold? And it uses a cache to remember the answers so we don't recalculate them. Let's zoom in on the base cases. First, if J is zero, it means we have zero transactions allowed left, so clearly, we can make zero more profit. Simple. The second check is if I is zero meaning we are on the very first day. If our target state is zero, meaning we end up empty-handed, we did nothing, so profit is zero. If our target state is 1, we must have bought the stock on this first day, so our profit is negative because we spent money. Negative price at zero. If our target state is 2, we must have short sold on this first day, so we gain the cash immediately. Positive price at zero. Now for the recursive logic. If we want to end the day in state 0, holding nothing, how could we have gotten there? Well, three ways. One. We were already holding nothing yesterday and just chilled. 2. We were holding a stock yesterday. State 1. And we sold it today. Selling adds the current price P to our profit. Or 3. We were in a short position yesterday. State 2. And we bought the stock back today to close the deal. Buying back costs us money. So we subtract P. We take the maximum of these three options. What if we want to end the day holding a stock? That's state 1. Either we were already holding it yesterday and did nothing, or we were empty-handed yesterday and decided to buy today. 
Notice that buying today starts a new transaction, so we look at J-1 for the previous state. The cost is subtracting P. The logic for state 2, the short position, is symmetrical. Either we kept our short position open, or we started a new short sell today. Starting a short sell means we gain the price P immediately, and again, this consumes one of our allowed transactions. Now recursion is great, but we can make it faster and leaner using dynamic programming. The editorial calls this approach too. The core idea is that what happens today only depends on what happened yesterday. We don't need to remember what happened 10 days ago directly. This allows us to use a rolling array technique. Instead of storing a grid for every single day, we just keep track of the current best profits for each transaction count and update them as we iterate through the days. And here's the code for that optimized approach. It's often much more concise. We initialize a DP table that only tracks the transaction counts K and our three states. We set up the first day, and then we loop through the rest of the days. Inside the loop, we update our best possible profits for being flat, holding long, or holding short. Let's look closely at this loop. We iterate through every day I. Then, we iterate through our allowed transactions J backwards, Y backwards. It's a classic DP trick, similar to the knapsack problem, to ensure we are using values from the previous day or previous transaction count without overwriting them before we need them. For DP0, we check if we should stay flat or sell a stock we held or buy back a short. For states 1 and 2, we check if we should hold our position or start a new transaction from the previous state, J-1. It's the exact same logic as the recursion, just flipped upside down. So how fast are these solutions? The time complexity is big O of N times K. This is because for every single day in our list of prices, we update the status for every possible transaction count from 1 up to K. As for space, the second approach is really efficient. It uses big O of K space. We don't store a huge grid for all N days. We just keep the small table of size K that we update as we go. All right, that covers the main solution in Python. As promised, for those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++, and JavaScript. I won't be breaking these down, so just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. All right, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Next up, here is the C++ version of the solution. Again, feel free to pause and review the code. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. Hopefully seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts. So let's wrap it up. The main takeaway here is how we handle the complexity of short selling by simply adding a third state. We realize that whether we are buying normally or short selling, it's just a matter of which direction the money flows when we open or close the trade. And finally, we saw how a simple rolling array can turn a complex recursive idea into a very space-efficient solution. All right, before we go, I want to quickly show you a personal project I built to solve a problem that always drove me crazy. It's an app called My Daily To Do. My biggest frustration with every other to-do app was retyping the same things every single day. Go to the gym, review code, work on the daily lead code problem. You know the drill. So I built my app around one simple but powerful idea separating your routine tasks from your one-off tasks. Routine tasks, marked with the little refresh icon, automatically reset for the next day. One-off tasks, like ship new feature, get the little puff of smoke icon, and they disappear for good once you're done. This small change turns a dumb checklist into a smart scheduler. If that sounds useful, you can try it right now on the web. The link is in the description. And one more thing I wanna make super clear. Right now, as a thank you for being an early supporter, the app is 100% free. There are no ads and no subscriptions whatsoever. This means you get access to everything, including really powerful features like presets, which let you save entire task lists and load them with a single tap. Now down the road, creating new presets will likely become part of a premium plan to help support the channel. But, and this is the important part, any presets you create now, while it's all free, are yours to keep and use forever. So it's the perfect time to check it out on the web play with all the features, and build out your perfect setup at no cost. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more lead code easy, medium, or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the Playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more Leet Code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leet Code Unlocked. 
it's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems. So if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code, it really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra, but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.